Angela Bassett is on the show this evening. Angela, it's so good to see you. It's so nice to see you. I've got to say, I've, every time I see you, Angela, any time I've seen you, you always look immaculate. Like, I can't even imagine you. Are you ever in an old pair of sweatpants and an old T-shirt? Truly, I am. Decades old pair of sweatpants. But They're I... the best ones to, you know, consider working out in. <laughs> but I bet even that, you do it with a certain grace and finesse that, frankly, I, oh. and I will say, anyone else in this studio cannot pull off. <laughs> you are so charming. Thank you. I try. I, I mean try. it. Now, last month, you took part in the, the brilliant Tina Turner documentary on HBO Max. Uh, your performance in that film is so extraordinary. Uh, obviously, you're nominated for an Academy Award for that role. I'm interested. Your kids, I think, are, your twins are... 15 now. They're 15? Have they yeah. seen the movie? Are they aware of its impact? I think they are aware that there was a movie, but they haven't seen it. They're slightly aware that there was a movie right. that I was in about Tina Turner, but they haven't seen it. Of course, they were a little too young, and I thought it a little too inappropriate. For sure. We kept them, you know, in the animated world for quite a long period of and time. And rightly so. But, uh, you know, I told them, I think maybe about three weeks ago, you ought to see that so you can be impressed by your mom. Yeah. And do what I asked you to do. But um, they pass. They pass for now. So it'll come around eventually, <laughs> I hope. They'll get a chance to see it. Now, obviously, your husband is the, the brilliant actor, Courtney B. Vance, who I'm a huge fan of. I'm interested to know, as parents, do you ever find yourselves, both of you, using your incredible acting powers on your children. Do you ever run it like a role play, the two of you? Who's gonna get mad? Who's gonna be the, you know what I mean? The good cop, the bad cop? Uh, yeah. He is usually pretty calm, uh, but he is consistent. Right. So like, for instance, right now, he's 2,500 so miles away in Chicago, and he can still get them to hop to it. Meanwhile, I'm 25 feet away, and I have to, ah, I either have to guilt trip them or, you know, pull things away or just leave the room, just throw my hands up, you know, <laughs> and just holler and go to my own corner and try to think of some other way to uh, get them to do what they know they need to do. <laughs> now, the first time, you said the first time you but ever... But I'm the good cop. I'm the good cop. Oh, you're the good cop. I'm the good cop. I tell them, you're, I am your good time. So you don't want to mess with me. Oh, that's yeah, that's that's the way to do it. I say that to my I'm kids. Your good time. I'm like, guys, yeah. I'm a breeze. I'm a walkover. <laughs> but if I go to eleven, you're gonna know about it. Exactly. So just exactly. keep me at a six. Keep me at a six. <laughs> keep me at a six I and like you'll that. get away with everything. If you push me to an eleven. That's everything you want. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, you said the first time that you, you ever acted in front of people, in front of a crowd, was at church. What were these performances like? What were you doing in church? I think I was just um, imitating the, uh, the, you know, the elders of the church, you know, right. in the amen corner. <laughs> you know, just <laughs> imitating the things they do and the, the pastor, all right, you know, pass around the collection plate and, uh, <laughs> you know, give what you can and... That sort of thing, and of course, you know, laying on of hands, you know, trying right. to heal the sick and visit the shut-in, <laughs> that kind of thing. So it was usually the fifth Sunday of a month, and they, I think, they wanted a break. They would allow the the young people, the kids, to take over service. I don't know how good we are, we were, but I think we, we were good for a laugh. Actually. I love that. I mean, when you started working uh, as a as an actor, you you worked a lot in your, you know, commercials and TV procedurals for, for quite a while, and obviously your big break was in Boys in the Hood. Your friends and family, they must have been thrilled to see you when you were, when you were on TV back in those days. Oh, yeah, Lou Angela makes good. And, and also, you want to, you know, let them know that don't worry so much. Look, something's happening. I'm eating, <laughs> you know. Sure. Like, you know, I'm, paying, I'm keeping the lights on. But um, I would, of course, that was way back in the day before the publicists and all of that. So I would get a piece of, you know, paper, you know, thick cut paper. I write, you know, Angela, the network, the time, the day, you know, be sure to watch. I'd write it four times, cut it, cut it in fourths, 
put a stamp on it and mail it to them. So because I wanted them to catch it. I was proud of what I was doing and I wanted them to, to catch it. So it worked. It worked for a while. Then after a while, you know, I left it to the trailers and the commercials, you know. Now let's talk about your brilliant show, your huge success, 911. It's in its fourth season, making it the longest, I think the longest running role of your career. What is it about the show that appeals to you? Oh my gosh. Well, I, I, I just love that we have these, these big set pieces week to week to week without fail. And we've been able to make them bigger and more grand and uh, amazing uh, from mudslides to tsunamis and on and on and on. And it's as if you're gone seeing something from the movies, you know, that you've gone to the cinema and seen, but we've created it for you right at home. Also, the relationships. I'm, I'm a people person, you know, I love people and emotions. I think a lot of the emer emotion, the emergencies go on in our souls, our spirits, our head and our hearts. So I enjoy that. You know, our writers are incredible and our cast and crew, we've actually become a family and they, they are some of the hardest working people um, and, and kindest to show up. So I, I love calling it home. It does make me scared of living in Los Angeles though. Every week. <laughs> Every week there's a tsunami, there's a tornado. I'm like, where have I moved to? What's the scariest thing that Ryan Murphy's had you do on the show? Well, actually, 911 hasn't been too scary for me. Um, but the scariest thing that Ryan Murphy has had me do is American Horror Story, where I had to handle four snakes. I oh, think wow. I cut it down from a boa constrictor and three snakes in a basket to a boa constrictor and one snake in a basket. Yeah, no, but uh, that was the scariest. I really had to keep my wits in my head about me or I would just have to do it again. <laughs> and uh, I, so I wasn't cool. I was just trying to get the job done. Well, you always, you always get the job done and you're doing brilliantly on this show.